Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Ooh, welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by SeatGeek. This is episode 400. And 13. I'll be your host, Kyle Cord. I'm here with my co host, Nate Reyes. And Nate. 413. That's how, that's how deep I'm taking you. Left center. Cranked. I, I saw this video today. And I, I feel bad for the kid. I really do. But it was this like prospect page mm-hmm. trying to get like kids signed or whatever. Sure. And I think it was parody. I'm not going to lie. I think it was parody. I think this was intentionally done. I think there's a conspiracy at play here. But it was like class of such and such prospects name, blah, 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 high school. Mm -hmm. And it was like, what are you doing with this pitch? (laughs) And you you think he's just going to throw the nastiest hook or just the cleanest, tightest slider or something. He just loops this curveball in and Every single one of the, it clearly went viral. Every single one of the comments in there was, uh, not to be a hater, but I'm taking that minimum 450. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, bro, recruiting is so crazy because like kids are like nine years old and they'll just throw something out like class of 2037. Like, stop, dude, stop. No one wants to see you. In your first game of your doubleheader, where you're doing what we did in between, you're crushing a Subway sandwich and going back on the bump next game. It's like, stop. This just, it starts, it starts too early nowadays. Too, too early. Uh, but it's never too early to subscribe to the 3 Take YouTube. In fact, you should have already been subscribed. Uh, but if you're Agreed. not, We'll let it we'll let it slide just this once. So get it going. Head on over to the YouTube, hit subscribe. We're trying to get to two thousand subs by the end of twenty twenty four. I like that. That's the goal. Don't let us down. Don't make us look like idiots. We do that enough on our we own. Do, yeah. So on don't our add own. to it. Okay. Don't contribute to the movement. I've got that get covered. Us, get, get us to two oh, K. Landscaping wanted us to get going before they started up. That's awesome. Oh, love yeah. that. That's no, that's great. Been quiet all day. 12:45, sure. Let's get it fire going. fire up the mowers. How about it? Um got YouTube covered. Uh let's start off with some Jorge Soler talk real quick. Uh I believe as luck would have it, this happened within 24 hours after Without we finished fail, last baby. episode. Uh, but we're going to talk about it. It's actually a nice thing. I think like a lot of our listeners can just expect some type of free agency move after this gets dropped. So you're welcome. Yeah. It's us. Clearly. We're the straw that stirs the drink. You're welcome. Jorge Soler, uh, Giants and Jorge Soler have agreed to a three year contract worth 42 million. Uh, presumably will be the DH. Uh, and it it beefs up the lineup a little bit. What are you uh, looking at the projected lineup for the Giants right now? Because um, you know they've made <laughs> they've made some additions. Certainly, Jung Hoo Lee, Jordan Hicks. Looking at what they're bringing to the table in twenty twenty four. How do you feel about it? Assuming it we sounds like a broken Solaire record, into the, dude. It the sounds like a broken slot. record. I sound the same every single Giants move. I sound the same for the last three years. I, I say the same freaking thing. I don't get it. I don't get what they're doing. I don't. I don't fully under understand the reasoning behind certain moves. I understand you need pop, but like from everything we saw, I'm not following. The Giants as closely as some, but from what we saw, Casey Schmidt coming onto the scene at third base. So now you have J.D. Davis that you brought in. Now you have Wilmer Flores that you brought in, 
who like are going to have to rotate through that DH spot. You have Austin Slater in the outfield mixed with Yaz in the outfield mixed with Conforto guys that need to rotate through Jung Hu Lee's presumably being the starting center fielder. So it's like, you're just, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You don't have to just sign guys just to sign them. Like, make it make sense. I don't Here, understand. Legitimate question for you. And I may have proposed this to you once before, but as a refresher, now that we're back on the Giants yet again. Yeah. Would you rather be a team such as the Red Sox who have made it clear that they're and obviously we'll get to a a move they just made today here in a moment. But generally speaking, making it clear that they're not trying, they're not trying to lock down guys for more than a year's worth of performance because they have signed a couple guys already who Mm -hmm. are effectively out through the 2024 season. So they're really just giving you one year. Um, Would you rather be in a situation like that where you don't make moves just to make moves or any moves for that matter? Or would you rather be the Giants where you sign some guys, you sign some noteworthy names, you sign a few guys to plug in some holes, but maybe you look at it and you go, I don't really know if that makes sense, but hey, at least we're making these moves. I don't know. Where would you rather be? I don't know. I'm mean, somewhere I, in between. I, I understand. I get it. Like you have to fill out a roster. I get that. I just don't understand. Like, I I wouldn't want this. I wouldn't want this if I was a Giants fan. And this like weird, you you're in this position where you kind of have to overpay for free agents, but at the same time, like you're not really like you're not going to go run down the division with this roster. You're incredibly lucky to find yourself in a wild card position, considering how like between the East and West and the NL being what it is. I just, I don't see how I, it, it's just like the, it's a weird fit and it's every year, every year they bring in like an older outfielder who I just don't get it. It's 14 million a year. Was it three years? 42. It, it seems like an overpay. It seems like Did you just do that math in your head. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, I just, I don't... If he's not going to play the outfield at all, but you have like three third basemen, you have five outfielders that you're going to want to get some time that are all aged, I think what it seems like, I could assume like Wilmer Flores... Slides over to first sometimes, but you have Lamont Wade Jr. there. Why did you bring in J.D. Davis when you have Casey Schmidt, who I understand you don't know if prospects will turn out, but like he looks pretty good. The, the, the outfield situation, like I just, I don't understand it. There's more than just one or two names out of the loop. And when you're so like you're so thin at certain positions, like you're super thin in the bullpen, you're super thin at short, but you're electing to spend money on a DH where you already have names that absolutely presumably need to fill in that DH and rotate through that position. So when you bring in a full time DH, it's like I would rather you spend your 14 a year somewhere else. Because this just doesn't add up. And they do it over and over again. They did it last year. It's every year. It's an it's an aged outfielder who needs DH time. Every year. And Soler has his moments. Good year last year. I think you saw he hit like 250, 35 jacks, 70, 80, 80 ribs, something like that. Probably one of his best years. But he's 31, and you're giving him 14 a year for three years. I, it's just I don't I don't get it. I feel like you're just 
no one else is interested in you and you're just willing to write checks out for whether it's a good fit or not. Nothing against Solaire. I, I think he can bop when he when he is on and definitely a good piece for most lineups. I just don't understand this lineup. And I again baffled by what the Giants are doing. That went about as exact that that went as, as exactly as I thought it would. Am I crazy? Am I the, no. I can't be the only no. one on this island. No, I mean when you dwind, when you dwindle it down to that, an aging outfielder who needs DH time. Or I mean, you even could you could flip that script and say an aging primary DH who could maybe provide you a, a few games here and there in the outfield. It's yeah. one or the other. That's what you're that's what you're yep. getting from the Giants year in and year out. So Yep. No, I mean you I think you nailed it with that. And uh, we'll see. I don't know that the Giants could have done much this offseason post Otani Yamamoto signings to close sure. that gap really at all. Yeah. And uh, I'm not but, yeah, I'm not saying like there's amazing options elsewhere. I think they're still in hopes for Snell. But like I, the roster configuration specifically on the offensive side is just it's it's horrendous, it's horrendous, and they do it every year. It just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, honestly, if we're talking smart moves from the Giants, at least when it comes to the eye test, right off the top of the head, I feel like Logan Webb is the smartest move they've made in terms of identifying a guy that could yeah. provide can produce. I'm going to be on, I'm getting, I'm getting blind squirrel vibes. I'm getting blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while vibes. That's what that feels like to me. Him. I think Patrick Bailey is an absolute freak of a catcher. I think the offensive stuff will show up eventually. I think defensively that guy's a wizard. I think there's some good in there. I just, I just, I don't, I don't understand. Sable, Slater, Yaz, Jung Ho Lee, Conforto, Conforto, Soler, I would say 15, 20 games in the outfield. Like I, and then three, three third baseman and Lamont Wade Jr. Wasn't he an outfielder and transitioned yeah. into being yep. a first baseman just sure to fit for was. them? I, I don't understand. I don't get it. It's it's not so much about Solaire. It's about like the series of moves that they made the last few years where it's like, what's that that meme where they're like, there's that red button and you like can't wait to press it. Aging outfielder who needs DH time. That's That should be the Giants tweet right now. getting old Brandon Woodruff re-signed by the Brewers to a two-year deal uh he'll be out for uh 2024 following surgery last October uh so uh essentially paying him to rehab for 2024 get him back 2025 I think this is it's like this was much standard. needed for them um following losing Corbin Burns. Yeah. Um, at least keep some of that, uh, some of what you had in that rotation intact. Um, and then it, it, I also see that they are now out on the possibility of moving Devin Williams. Did I, did I read that? Sure. I believe, I believe that's what I saw. So they're, they're She's identifying to do that. Right. Like quite now. Right. Yeah, but they're they're identifying pieces as they should that they want to keep at bay, at least for the next couple of years, hopefully, uh, for their sake, and make a run at the central. What was the Woodruff deal for? Uh, what was that deal for? How old is he? I didn't get the. I think at the time when I when I was pulling my notes together, I don't know if the financials were released. He's freshly thirty one, but it is a two year deal, obviously. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I don't see any um, numbers either. Oh. 34. So six, 17 per. Hmm. 17 mil to, to rehab. That sounds nice. It's not bad. Um, yeah. I, I guess. Because, like, you got to assume when he comes back, if there isn't any injury stuff, he kind of steps into an ace role pretty easily. We've seen him be an ace before. I think he's had some rough, some rough patches, but ace, he'll step ace in, quality stuff. He'll uh, step oh. into a number one, number one. To you, to correct. use your words, correct, correct. From years past, he'll step 100%. into a number one role, not an ace, correct. Time, step into the uh, number one role. Um, no, no tell. rush on the Devin Williams thing. Like, yeah, it's you might as well just see what you have and then assess closer to the deadline. But, um. I guess interesting. I, I like gut feeling. Maybe obviously he doesn't pitch this year. You bring him back in twenty twenty five. Maybe he has really good stuff in like the the whole. Hey, we liked you when you were down bad. Would you maybe be down to take a hometown discount to stay here for the rest of your career? That's kind of the vibe I get. So, or again, comes back 2025 and his nails and they're out of it. And, you know, you ship him out for whatever the remainder half of half of 17 is, you know, eight, eight and a half, whatever it may be. That's pretty sellable, pretty tradable. So I guess it makes sense. I This is like the new standard, huh? Like we're going to get into another deal here in a minute that like, when they go out it. for for TJ, I hate it. Let's pay you for your recovery, and then I don't know. Maybe just beat the rush of what the demand would be after surgery and recovery. There, yeah, there has to be like the, there's a reason I think teams are shifting to this approach because I don't recall this being as prominent. Me neither. In I recent years, I, I don't understand. The, the switch, but there must be something that says that there is success in finance approach. Like you said, maybe you're beating, beating some, some sort of rush, maybe yeah. an inevitable rush based on who, who it is that you're dealing with. Uh, like what name you're dealing with. Yeah. Uh, but he is, he turned, would have turned 31 within the last month. So uh, by the end, uh, by next spring, once he's once he's back for 2025 he'll be 32 and then if it's if they do decide to ship him out starting 2026 he'll be 33 so that's that's what you're dealing with with Brandon Woodruff he's got good stuff like he's he's got great stuff and like you said yeah. he's he's given you ace quality stuff before mm-hmm. but if if this is their move for that number one role for the next handful of years like if they if they're like okay that we're not we're not bothering going out and signing somebody like we we feel like he can be our guy Mm -hmm. that's what you're dealing with it's a no-brainer if you're the player absolutely 17 to to rehab yeah yeah i I feel like there's got to be there's there has to be some level of like if, if you are a player Cause as we mentioned, there's been there's been many over the last two to three years who have who have done this. They've signed to rehab to then come back. What do you think the level of indebtedness looks like for these guys? Like, what to do you like, think goes through their mind? Stay. Yeah, they're they're cashing a check just to hit the training room, just to work on these regiments. Day in and day out. I'm not saying yeah. they're not doing anything, but in terms of the value they're providing the team for that given year plus, very minimal. So do you think there's a le- a degree of willingness to take that, take a discount 
should the opportunity arise? One would think if this contract, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, this contract kind of sucks. Because, I mean, you're, he had 10.8 last year on a one-year deal. And to sit there and say, hey, we're the Milwaukee Brewers. We're not going to be able to afford him after TJ recovery year. Like, are you thinking he's going to make more than 17? Do you think there's a club out there that's going to say you're 32? You just missed a year from TJ. We're going to give you 20. Like I, I think 17 is a bit yeah. of an overpay. Then 34 yeah. total is like, if you only get, say they get him back, you missed 2024. Say they're out of it halfway through 2025 and you ship him out of town before the deadline. In reality, like, is the return you're going to get worth at that point, like, tw- what, 25 all in if you're paying half of 2025 season salary? Like, is are you going to get a haul that's worth $25 million for... 12 games started out of Brandon Woodrow. I I don't like it actually. Now that I think more about it, I don't like the number. I don't hate the idea of you being a small market team and saying, Hey, let's keep him. Let's show our loyalty. Hopefully he returns the favor when he finds success again and is a free agent again. But for 34, I don't love that. 34 mil a year or 34 mil total. And he's 32 by the time he's pitching for you again. Yeah, maybe so. I'll pull up numbers. He's he's definitely dipped down at times. Maybe selfishly, if you're the Brewers, you kind of ride it out and let time work in your favor. Brandon Woodruff kind of slides into the, the shadows for a year. And then when it comes time to re up, you go, okay, like you're coming, you're you're fresh off surgery. I don't know if we necessarily want to commit a whole lot of money. Let's let's play it by ear. And you may have been able to save a few million, but yeah, maybe that that plays into their they're banking on a big bounce back. Maybe they know more uh yeah. than they're letting on to by by bringing it back. I I'm not I'm not sure, but the most I'm, innings I'm, he's ever I'm thrown is one seventy nine. In 2021. Yeah. Uh, 2022, 153 innings. 2019, 121. I, I just don't know if there's enough there to say you're going to be our ace. And I definitely don't see $34 million here. Good. But not great. It seems like an for Woodruff. Definitely a win. Win for Woodruff. Uh, Liam Hendricks. Two-year deal with the Boston Red Sox announced today. Um, he will be out from TJ. It's possible he pitches late into 2024, but with the way that the Red Sox offseason has gone, I feel that there will be no need to rush him back. So... One can assume, given the ramp, the the only the only reason I would say Liam Hendricks, it would be a possibility that he returns late in twenty twenty four is because it's Liam Hendricks, and we've we've seen how he works back friend of the pod, Liam Hendricks, friend of the pod, Liam Hendricks. We've seen how he's come back before, and how mm-hmm. accelerated he can make that process. Mm-hmm. So it's possible that even if they're not in contention, I'm banking on that being the case. Maybe he just wants to get back and fine tune some things before they head into the off season where he really ramps it back up for 2025. Um, but if there's any sort of hiccup, if the, if the Red Sox are on pace to win 55 games, not going to happen. Hopefully not, but right. 
if that happened, just bank on Liam Hendricks not taking the mound until 2025. But big, I'm I'm a huge Liam Hendricks Same. fan, dude. I Same. like when I when I saw that notification this morning, I was a little bummed. I had a feeling you would be. And yeah. on the flip side, I was I was rather excited. Um it's one of the few bright spots I've had this offseason as a Red Sox fan. And it almost made me forget <laughs> the lack of effort we've seen from the front office. Yeah. At the Boston Red Sox. Just for a moment. Just for a moment, it made me forget. Uh but then, then I thought, you remembered you know, he's not pitching this year. And then on top of that, you remember he's not pitching. So I'm like, yeah, that was, that was a fleeting happiness. What were the numbers on this deal? Uh, two years, 10 mil. Makes much more sense. Makes much more sense. Pay guy five mil to rehab. Sure. Oh, we're also talking about a reliever versus reliever, different circumstances, but the rehab year I think is key. Like, I mean, yeah, Woodruff was also already under contract anyway. But yeah, if you have the opportunity to pay that up front and you're looking at a guy who's about to rehab, you're going, eh, we'll we'll bring you in or we'll keep you around depending upon the contract situation. But we're not going to go crazy. And I think, again, five years or five, five over two or five each year is just yeah. that's totally fine. I don't think that's anything to make you feel bad about. And Best case scenario, you got lightning in a bottle in 2025. And when I mean lightning, that that guy is lightning. So I'm a little bummed about the location. Um, but this makes more sense as far as like a monetary deal goes of signing a guy to rehab. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I still think they try to ship Kenley out. I think this cut, allows costs. This allows you to probably hold on to Kenley until the deadline. And then similar to a lot of teams, just assess where you are in the season. If you're 12 games out, excuse me, if you're 12 games out at that point and you're like, this season's toast, you finish the season with no closer, knowing that you have a pretty good closer coming into next year. Interesting. I like it more that we're talking it out. But this is now the second arm that the Red Sox have signed who will be of zero value to them, presumably in 2024. The other being Michael Fulmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not not sure what we're doing there. Uh, Yeah. But weird. Go, go Sox. Am I right? Go Sox. So gotta, we go from you get crickets on one of those buttons so you can press. This is as good as I I can get. That's all of that's all of Red Sox Nation. All right, right now, collectively, anyone's speakers or eardrums if they're wearing AirPods. That that came in hot. How about that? Yeah. Uh, so we go from a guy who, there you go, figure this out, literally would give his arm to pitch to a guy mm-hmm. that actively hates baseball. Perfect transition. I knew you're going to nail it. I knew you're going to stick the landing. Thank you. That's a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Anthony Rendon. I, can I be honest with you? Please. Can I be honest? When I woke up this morning, I did not think we were going to be talking about Anthony Rendon. I thought we were done. I thought we were done talking about Anthony Rendon. But unfortunately, we had to talk about Anthony Rendon. Because Anthony Rendon has given us yet another reason. Yeah. Yeah. To talk about Anthony Rendon. Look, I I wish I could give credit to where this interview or... I don't, was it an interview? Was it in the clubhouse? 
or the who is still talking to this idiot media availability i don't know what, what this was from but i pulled a screen grab from some interaction he had with somebody i think i saw sam blum sam bloom sam blum tweeted it i don't know if he was the one that uh was having this interaction but let me just read you let me just read you this transcript from this interaction last year you said you'd consider retiring what's your mindset now anthony rendon my enthusiasm has been the same since i got drafted to be honest with you i was actually deleting old emails because my storage to my maximum in my email so i'm going back and deleting not old a tech emails. Guy. I emailed myself a pros and cons of why I wanted to stay in the game. This was in 2014. My thought process of the game has not changed since then. I keep making it this long. Guy is not good with words. I don't, I have a hard time understanding what he's talking about. Uh, Next question. How does your pro uh, pros and cons list compare to 10 years ago? It's a lot different. I'm married. I have four kids. My priorities have changed since I was in my early 20s. So definitely my perspective on baseball has been more skewed. Is it still a top priority for you? It's never been a top priority for me. This is a job. I do this to make a living. My faith, my family come before come first before this job. So if those things come before it, I'm leaving. Is it a priority? Oh, it's a priority for sure because it's my job. I'm here, aren't I? Do you want to be here? I don't want to talk to you guys at seven in the morning or whatever time it is. Do you want to be here playing baseball for the angels? I have answered your question. So why do you keep picking at it? Let me just say right off the top, because I've seen a lot of, I've I've seen a lot of accounts post this quote without the context and look out of context for sure. I, I really, whether or not you want to believe me, I do my best to post quotes like this in their full context because I know how easy it would be to post it out of context. Sure. I, I'm not perfect in that. Sometimes I I leave uh, the tail end of something out and it throws everything off. But something like this, I feel like it's important to post the full quote within its full context because it's easy to sit there and look at the part where he talks about, it's never been a top priority for me. This is a job. I do this to make a living. If you cut it right there, you're going, okay, Anthony Rendon, like how much more do you want the public to hate you? How much more do you want baseball fans to hate you? But then he goes on to say, my faith, my family come first before this job. So if those things come before it, I'm leaving. I know we've shared our thoughts on Anthony Rendon over the last month. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. It's just the the issue that I have with this is the timing of it. Like why why are we dabbling in it? like he's he's made it very clear that he doesn't have a problem answering a question in a way that could rub people the wrong way. Right. That's known. But with what little self-awareness you have left, Anthony Rendon, can you not use that to go, ah, I've been in some really hot water recently for some things I've said and right. for the ways in which I've said them. Maybe I don't use these words in this way to make it sound like I don't care about my team. I don't care about my my what I do for a living because at the end of the day, it's just a job. He didn't do that. He just went out and said, I, I do this to make money, essentially, is what he said. And if something more important comes up, I'm going to, I'm going to take that route. That's basically what he said. Yeah. I don't hate where we ended, but again, everyone that reads that is going to stop there. They're going to stop at the out of, out of context quote that makes it seem like he doesn't care. But in reality, pretty much every, I think every adult man would say that same thing, right? Like you, of course, have priorities. Any other superstar in the game would probably answer that the same way. Anybody that's married or has faith would answer that the same way. So you can't argue it. It's just like they would give the same answer, not answer it the same way. He answered it in a horrible way. And there's definitely ways to lead with that. Is baseball your top priority? It's not my top priority. Faith and family come first. But after that, yeah, baseball, I've spent my whole life working for this. And it is a top priority, but it's not the top. It's it's not that hard. 
then it's clear that he's doing this on purpose. He's answering these questions this way on purpose. This like desire to be the villain with this like almost self-righteous chip that he's put on his shoulder for for seeming like he's being attacked by media. It's like you're putting your own foot in your mouth, dude. You're doing this to yourself. I just don't get why he continues to do the same thing. But at a certain point, I mean, we've had this across sports for decades. There's there's just there's athletes that enjoy doing this to media. They enjoy it. They're polarizing. And sorry to say it, but this is the only way we're ever talking about Anthony Rendon cuz outside of this stuff, he's not really relevant anymore. But it, I think Ant- why why say this stuff to stay relevant if it's not positive? I, I think Anthony Rendon has forgotten that we're at a day and age where you can no longer keep things like this in the clubhouse. I, again, I don't know what the context of this conversation was. I don't know if it was at uh, media availability or spring training or whether this was a podcast. Or what I honestly don't know. But. We're at a day and age where you can't, it, like, if he's trying to be like tongue in cheek, you know, little jab here, little jab there to the media, and like have fun yeah. with it. Like, if that's the route he's trying to take, we can, we you can't do that anymore as a professional athlete. These your quotes get out far too fast; they spread far too wide. Right, the context gets skewed wildly, and when you do it as frequently as he's doing it the narrative surrounding you is going to change mm-hmm. pretty terribly and it's going to be hard to recover. And he's at a point now where I, I think he just doesn't care. And I think yeah. it started at the beginning of last year and it may have even been before that. Like I Sounds saw, like I it. saw, I saw a post the other day and I don't remember what the, like what the, what it was stating a case for, but it was basically talking about his heart rate and the, 2019 world series and like the comments were starting to put the pieces together talking about how calm he appeared in the 2019 world series and people were saying well if this whole like not really caring about baseball thing has been going Mm -hmm. on for some time it's probably pretty easy to keep a relatively low heartbeat in high pressure situations if you just show up thinking like i'm just here to collect my money i'd I really couldn't care less whether we win or lose or yeah. whether or not we bring home a, a championship or not. Yeah. So it's, I don't know, man. The I, I think we maybe have been uh, deceived a little bit by the, the earlier part Probably. of Anthony Rendon's career, or maybe he's just becoming jaded, dude. I, I, I really don't know. It doesn't make any sense it's why he's nice behaving this way. Cocktail of all those things. I don't get it. I don't get it. But I think it's safe to say that he just doesn't he, – he hates baseball. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but based on what he has said to the media – I he think is, he hates being a pro is what it really seems like. But he'll sit there. He'll collect his check. Yeah. I don't also, get Also, if he's been emailing himself going back 10 years contemplating retirement – what you waiting for, dude? Because nobody wants you here. I uh, some people have asked me. They said, like, why doesn't why why don't the angels just cut ties? And I'm going. And I actually was having a conversation with somebody today, and I I responded and I said, honestly, I think the angels are waiting for Anthony Rendon to somehow violate his contract by behaving mm. in such a way that voids the rest of his contract so they can right. get out of it scot free. Like, and I said that screw up eventually. I said yeah, I said that like partially joking but the, but then I thought about it more and I'm like no, that's very that's very much within the realm of possibility with this guy. It is. He's been he's made headlines what two to three times this off season yeah. and he, he hasn't done anything. Yeah. Like a value it's just been for all the wrong reasons. I don't like him. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with. 
Uh, Rob Manfred will be all done in 2029. He announced, uh, told reporters on Thursday that this will be his final term in office and will retire in January of 2029. Look, man, there's a lot of people out there going, oh, everybody calm down. Why are we getting so excited? Well, because we know when the end is. I don't care if it's Mm -hmm. not happening this week. I don't care if it's not happening next month. I don't even mm-hmm. care if it's not happening next year. I can I can wait it out. I just needed to know when the end was going to be. Yeah. I didn't want this sprung on me 10 years down the road. Like, right. oh, we had to sit through 10 tantalizing years not knowing right. when this madness was going to conclude. But now we know. January we know. 2029. Dare I say we get our game back. <sighs> Probably not, because the next CBA is what, 2027? Is it five years or 10 years? I can't imagine him leaving. It's not 10 years. I can't imagine him leaving before the next CBA. Well, I mean, no, I let me rephrase. I don't mean we get our game back in the sense of like immediate action. Will follow. I'm just saying. No, new, I know what you're saying. A new face. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, new new conversations can be had about whoever fills the role. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, throw throw a Theo Epstein's name in into the ring for consideration. Yeah, I'm all done with owner style commissioners. I know that they're the guy that represents the owners, but someone who has their you know, figure on the pulse a little bit more would be nice. Um, The reason I asked is because after when I was scrolling through articles after that article, I saw something that he was, which I actually, he only says a few things that I agree with. And this was one of them. He said before his time is done, he's hoping to create a free agency deadline in the off season where he's really hoping for like a week or two of just free agency frenzy. And then there's a deadline. And I was like, you say, know, it, say it, say you it, know, say it. I like it. I like it too. I uh, like it. I got to tip my cap. And the, for the record, not my first time tipping my cap told yeah. Robbie Manfred. Yeah. I'm just saying the majority of times I'm going, what are we doing? Yeah. Um, but this is certainly one of those times where I'm going, you know what? That would be a, I think that would be a, a breath of fresh air. That would be a welcome change. I mean, and of and course, you, you got Boris coming out being like, yeah. uh, no, we're yeah. good. Yeah, I'm sure, Dude, for sure. Chill. You've made I think your money. There's certain things that don't get, um, that probably get a more blown up and blown out of proportion. I think we're guilty of it at times. And there's probably some things that need more attention. I think there are some good things he's done. I, uh, what flew under the radar was the, um, and again, this is more of like a MLB PA and MLB CBA type agreement thing, but minor leaguers being able to have just minor league agents like that, you know, and the things he's doing or has done with minor leaguers. And, and again, like it's probably more the player association side that's fighting for these things. But he is agreeing to it and it is in his tenure. Um, When you talk about him, like, I think we're going to probably look back and be appreciative of the shift being eliminated. Um, I can kind of get on board with the limited disengagements. I think the bigger bases and the pitch clock, those are two things that I don't really love, but. I think we'll end up being okay with him and and being fine. So when you talk about him going to 2029, I think you'll see all of these rules he's put into place. You're going to see an uptick in in what's probably I'm assuming viewership. There's a lot and and I don't know how much credit goes to him versus just us being in the day and age that we are, having the technology to be able to watch games from anywhere. Um I'd like to see blackouts addressed before he leaves. I'd like to potentially see the A's elsewhere. And I'm going to go ahead and say two more teams added into the league and probably a divisional reconstruction. I think there's a a lot coming in these next five years that he's going to do. 
that's why I was asking about when the next CBA is. Did you find an answer on that? Uh, they're five years. Five years. Um, so 2027 yeah. will be the, the next one. So that gives him another yeah. CBA and then two years to watch it all kind of unfold. Um, yeah, I, I think he, you, you mentioned, I think that the expansion, I think he, that's going to be the bookend to his yeah. Uh, tenure. Yeah. Um, so and then possibly teams, the re, the realignment could be the cherry on top. I, I could really see that because like, it's almost like the realignment happens naturally with expansion. So I could genuinely see it. I really could. Yeah. Um, it, I'm I'm looking forward to a new name in the commissioner's yeah. role, but I just I really hope it's not one of those situations where, well, be careful what you wish for, because it's if true. we somehow end up with somebody that's more even more radically progressive with the game and it's yeah, there's not gonna be much left. I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it. I'll know yeah. how I feel about it, but I'm going to tread lightly in terms of wanting to I rush I Manfred even, out of there. I'm not even like fully familiar with what that process is of electing a new commissioner and the voting process or the nominee. Pro- I don't even know. I, I feel like every time we find out, it's just like, boom, here's who's taken over. And we find out like a couple months before the, the prior commissioner steps down. You know, so I don't know what it looks like, but I would assume there's probably some type of protege that's going to be just cooking in the oven for the next five years to be prepared to take over and take the reins in the same direction. I mentioned Theo, I would have loved for him to just stay in the office. Yeah. Until then. Uh, I I genuinely feel I would feel so much better. It would it would really change things to be able to see someone with baseball either playing or operational experience. Either of those things I think would do wonders. I just don't see it. but I like that there's a, there's an end date to this and five years is going to flow fly by fly by. Yeah. It's going to go quick. I mean, I just think, I think back to like when we started the podcast, I'm like, I feel like that was just yesterday, but Mm -hmm. you go back and you see the things that were happening in like 2018, 2019. I'm like, Holy cow. That's it's been five years. Yeah. So, For the record, yeah. I will say I'm fully on board with a couple more teams. I don't see a problem going to 32. Yeah, yeah I don't hate I it. I don't really see a problem with alignment or realignment. I think certain things you can't mess with, Cubs, Cardinals, Yankees, Red Sox, Braves, Phillies, Dodgers, Giants, probably all need to remain in that same division. But I think like the inner division rivalry stuff is fading even more just because of the fact that we play less games against each other now. So I think it's just becoming less and less important. But I don't mind the additional teams. Especially when you were saying what last week where you look at the map of all the cities who don't have teams. Yeah. We can get some more baseball out there. What's wrong with more baseball? Do you wanna do you wanna talk about this? I know we get a lot of heat for talking at length about this particular topic. Which one? Can we talk about these jerseys real quick? Oh boy. Sure. I didn't want to bring it up, but it's all the, uh, you know, they say it's all the rage. This is all the outrage across baseball right now is these horrendous fanatics, Nike jerseys. I don't last I checked. They're Nike uniforms with the Nike swoosh on them, but they're produced 
and manufactured by Fanatics, who, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I believe manufactures the NHL jerseys now. I did not know that. Interesting. And if I read correctly, I think NHL fans are fed up with the garbage really? that Fanatics put. Yeah, dude, Fanatic, and which I agree with, but the the consensus that I'm I'm gathering out there is that anything Fanatics touches turns to crap. This, they did the same thing with um, didn't they? They or we talked about it. They bought out Tops, right? Tops, yeah. Or so they own Tops. They now are the manufacturer for the uniforms. They're in the NHL. I think there's even another sport that they're involved in with the jersey production. But it's just garbage, man. It's garbage. And the the most egregious element of all of this is the incredibly obvious PR stunt that they put these players on. I know mm-hmm. you're you're off social media for the offseason, but the just blatant under the t- table paychecks yeah. that they're giving these guys. Yeah. Mike Trout's on there. Uh, Jason Hayward's on there. Corbin Carroll's on there. I uh, I want to say Adley was on there. Adley, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I, I feel like I remember seeing something from Adley. Um, but it's – and they're just like, can't wait to – embrace this new technology like change is good i really like them they they breathe better but then you've got other guys that are around the league who've been around the league for much longer going yeah now these are crap this is they're cheap knockoffs and you have you have fans out there going why does it matter like just don't buy the jerseys in it's like we're not even we're not just talking about the replicas that you can right. buy at the store we're talking about the jerseys that they're literally wearing we're we're rolling these guys out in heat press uniforms. I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah. Where we would be rolling these guys out in almost I think it's exclusively heat press. Am I if if I'm not mistaken. I think the front now is heat pressed. The patches are heat pressed. Here's the theory. Here's my theory. Number one, Fanatics started with memorabilia. This is where they took off, right? This is where they gained their name. Then they got into purchasing tops. Now, obviously, with the with the deal with jerseys, I think there is this desire to figure out what the margins are for on field uniforms as well as replica jersey uniforms. The closer you make those. You know what I mean? It's like we're not going to we're not going to spend money creating these jerseys for fans that are affordable. So why don't we drop down the level of quality for the players, make those a little bit more affordable, make these closer and more even. And then when you talk about turning it into memorabilia, if they're cheap, if they're crap, players are going to wear through them quicker. And what do you do with worn jerseys? Give them to the Fanatics. Fanatics sells them online as game worn memorabilia it's just a sick cycle of stuff but this is what happens when you get companies that just monopolize you were good at one thing and then you monopolize and you've taken over too much stuff and now your brother your butter spread too thin so just stick to what you're good at and leave it alone look i love butter sure and i love i love monopoly both but i, I don't love what fanatics is doing. Yeah. They just how these got passed through so many channels of approval is mind blowing. Like how can you we've we've seen the before and after pictures. They're it's it's night and day. The heat press I'm gonna pull them up. You keep the going. size of it here. I'll send you I'll send you the one that I think is the most like really does it in the most the most telling. It was a before and after, which, by the way, glad I brought that up. Brings up a whole nother topic. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'll send this to you. Okay. Um. Yeah, there's just so many. 
elements to these jerseys that are garbage. Like they made the name smaller. They dropped the MLB logo down, which to most people or to a lot of people maybe doesn't matter. But if you're a fan of jerseys, if you're a fan of just overall aesthetic. Oh, boy. It, it looks like the the giveaway jerseys you get when you walk through the ticket gate. It's yeah. exactly what that looks like. And so what I was what I was alluding to is that I posted this graphic the other day. It was like the side by side and it was making its rounds all over social. Well, initially. And then I get this notification that said my post had been removed. Oh, I love that on on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Who obviously are they're both owned together. Sure. And so I do a quick search on Facebook real Zuckerberg. quick. I do a quick little search on Facebook. Could not find a single post really? about the Fanatics uniforms. I'm not saying they're they're sweeping the. I'm not saying they're sweeping social media because I'm I I see it still on Twitter and whatnot. I'm just saying I thought it was odd. Yeah, but that's Elon, baby. You can't uh, can't mess with him. He's gonna let it. He's gonna let whatever needs to be out he's there. He's gonna be let out it eat. There. Yeah, he's gonna let it eat. I just thought it was interesting. I, I I've been known to to promote various conspiracies. I'm not saying this is a conspiracy. I'm just saying I thought it was interesting. That's all. Uh, it's tough. It's real tough. I don't know, man. There's something about I've never. I to be honest with you, I thought when you brought this up, we were going to talk like the city connects. I didn't even realize it was this bad. It was bad. This is real bad. So the, the Robin, day we see a letter like come off when a guy dives head first or something. I'm not going to be happy. Like with the. Uh, we have seen this. Great we have seen this. In the w, or the WBC. Remember that? Man, look at the sun coming through the window there. That's nice. That's a nice look. Yeah. Right on my face. How about that? Um, no, we've seen, uh, with, wasn't it Eovaldi? Didn't, didn't like his seven come off? Because I, I think, um, or that may, that may have not fallen off. I think he may have just wore the wrong Jersey number. I, that's what I thought it was. Like I've seen like wrong Jersey numbers or like a letter not being, in there, you know what I mean? Like the I and Cardinals missing or something random like that, which is it's a manufacturer issue, whatever. But like the quality of stuff. The heat press is. So this makes more scene. sense with like the Yankees like trimming down a little bit on their away jersey. Like the border going away makes it feel like it's less of a Yankees call. But their relationship know, with Nike is too big. So who's really at fault? Is it more Nike or is it more Fanatics? In this scenario, I think it's Fanatics because they're just garbage. Huh. Nike is also, I think, should be held accountable because they're the Nike ones who are- Nike doesn't even like baseball, so I don't get, I don't get yeah, that. Yeah, but they're the one trotting, trotting these uniforms out there with their logo on it. So, so how I mean, many of these athletes, you, or how many of these players that you just mentioned are like Nike athletes? Like Adley and Mike Trout and again, I'm, I think Adley was in there. I don't, I don't know for certain, but I saw Corbin Carroll. I saw Jason Hayward, Mike Trout, another one who I know for fact is a Nike guy. Um, hmm. There are some others. An interesting correlation. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I, like, I, I these guys were most certainly getting compensated for these comments, but I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to sit you, here and say like, I'm cutting ties with Nike over how bad they are, but I'm also like, no, you're yeah. not going to make me say this. This is, these are, these are atrocious. I wonder if there's a day where, where teams just start going rogue, man. Do it in college football, you know? Some have Nike, some have Adidas, some have Jordan. I wonder. Just 
Go back to Russell, man. Big time. Shout out to Russell. I'll take what, Majestic no, back. To... I'll talk. I'll take Majestic back in a freaking heartbeat. Yeah, I like Majestic, but you want to talk about a durable uniform? Russell can put together a durable uniform. I'm yeah. a big fan. Um, closing the book here. Just a couple quick items, and I'm gonna run through our uh, real quick. Record. Last thing Same on the jersey quick. thing. Sure. What was I saw that there was only two or eleven remaining teams that hadn't had a City Connect jersey, and then now there's two left off of that list because there's only nine coming out this year. Did you see that? Yeah, it was, it's the Yankees it's the, and, and the A's. A, they're not going to commit, at least yeah. from what yeah. I've read, they're not going to commit to an A's City Connect when there's just the turmoil between the city, the organization, Vegas even. There's just way too much going on. So, I mean, I, from that point of view, I get it. I will say I'm not surprised about the Yankees putting up a fight, nor do I hate it that much. I think the entire baseball world would be like, this sucks. Whatever they come out with. Sure. There's just certain jerseys you don't you don't touch. You don't need to touch. I mean, do you think it's less or do you think it's more of the Yankees just saying, hey, don't even bother giving us a call about this? Yeah. That's and what I read let, in the like, article. Hal, Hal Steinbrenner was like, we haven't even discussed this. We got more important things to worry about. I don't care about this. I mean, I respect I, I, respect, I respect. I respect that. I respect yeah. that. Like, like I don't care about this. Like we're, We've been talking about, what, 28 for how many yeah. years now? We yeah. we got to worry about that. Right. And, and Let's just lock in on some other stuff. These uniforms. Don't yeah. care so much about this. Uh, speaking of of uh, the Yankees, real quick, did you see did you see Marcus Stroman rolled out uh, to yesterday's workout in a 2004 Yankees opening day T shirt? Come get doing? your boy! Come get your boy, Just Nate! Absolutely tone deaf. Come get your boy! What is that? Why would you do that? Why I'm would asking you, do that? you. That's so I'm asking absurd. you. No, I didn't see it. I'm pissed now. That's so dumb. Tone deaf. 2004 opening day. Any other year is fine. I mean, why not get it? Why not get a 2004 ALCS shirt while you're at it? He probably has it. Absurd, man. Yeah. Jump. It's it's just starting earlier than I thought it would start. It really is. I'm glad I got. I'm glad I got the juices going Freaking for you there, idiot. Stroman. Guys, stinks. All right, closing the book here. Super quick. The Giants signed Pablo Sandoval uh, to a as a non roster invitee to minor league camp or on a minor league deal. I'm sorry. Um, has not played since. Let me double check here. He was in that Dubai league, wasn't he? Whatever that yeah. was. Yeah. Last played in 2021. What are we doing here? I think he was in that Dubai league. Yeah, like he was. DD and yeah. Um, no, just yeah, another baseball guy. Baseball United. Just another guy that's, you know, aging and probably needs some DH time. So <laughs> yeah, right perfect. on. That's it. Hit the nail on the head. Uh, and lastly, I should have, we should have mentioned it uh, uh, when we were talking about the A's just a minute ago, but the... Apparently, Sacramento is the favorites, uh, or is the front runner, I should say, to host the A's post lease ending with the Coliseum pre move to Vegas. But I did hear that there still talks about a lease extension in yeah, Oakland I didn't see that. at the same time. That. So, like, there's is Sacramento seemingly like a safety net if that falls through? Maybe. Sure. I don't know. I'm all done. What a, what I'm a so cluster, over dude. it. I'm so over it. What a cluster. So over it. Let's bring it back to the Yankees. Let's close it out here with our Unbreakable Records segment featuring Joe DiMaggio. Jolton Joe. Now, I will say right off the top, of all of the Unbreakable Streaks, 
one that we've covered and two that just exist out there in the baseball world. Mm -hmm. This one feels possible. This one feels, this one feels possible. Mm -hmm. More so than any of the other ones we've covered, I think. Just a little background on Joe D, Hall of Famer, three-time MVP, 13-time All-Star, nine-time World Series champion, nine-time World Series champion, two-time batting title champ, and the Major League Player of the Year. He had a career war of 79.1. He accumulated 2,214 hits, 361 home runs, career batting average of 325, and had 1,537 ribbies. And also oh. had Marilyn Monroe. So, I mean, there's a lot of accolades and, up there. And had Marilyn Monroe. And stole an MVP, but we'll get into that just a little later. Um, 1941, the very season in which he stole the MVP. Uh, as you, I'm sure you know by this point, 56-game hit streak. Uh, has not been touched since. I want to say the second closest was... Uh, who was it? I couldn't even guess. Willie Keeler, 45 games. Back in... I say back in, back in 1897. Well, <laughs> over the span of two years, 1896 and 1897. Doesn't count. Um, well, I mean, he had to break somebody's record. Uh, but his record lasted from May 15th to July 16th. He hit 408 during that span and surpassed, as I mentioned, Willie Keeler's record of 44 games. Uh, did you know, Nate, that Joe DiMaggio in uh, 1933 also had a hitting streak in the PCL of 61 games? I feel like I heard that. Yeah, I forgot about it. Yeah. He had a knack for streaks, my friend. Very That's impressive. Nuts. What's the highest since? Since the closest then? We've gotten... It's a good question. Remember that, remember that kid in college, like 10, 12 years ago? Yes. Yeah. I think he beat it, didn't he? he in college. Yeah. I think college, it's been, I think, I think it's like, been beaten in college, but also I think it's, it's been topped in the minors too. Has it not? I don't know. I, I want to say bo both levels. I think it's been topped. Um, Pete Rose, to answer your question, 1978, 44 games. Um, yeah. One thing I did not know about this streak, and Talk I should have put the pieces together, but did you know that in the middle of this streak was when Lou Gehrig passed away? I did not know that. I did not. I didn't realize that. But if I would have thought about it for any length of time, I would have been able to figure that out. But hmm. as I was digging around, came across that. He, on hmm. June 3rd, hit in his 20th straight game. Which was a day out, right? June second is Lou, is Lou Gehrig Day. Yeah, June second sounds right. A day after Gehrig passed away, uh, he had his twentieth straight hit. Um, some nuggets here from the streak. I thought this was interesting. As as with any streak like this, you wonder like how close was it to crumbling at any sure. given point throughout right. the streak. The closest call came on May 30th when Joe DiMaggio singled in the ninth inning against Boston's Earl Johnson. He extended it five times in the seventh inning and seven times in the eighth inning. Ooh, that's so cutting, sick. I like cutting that. Cutting it close. Yeah. Cutting it close. And then I was reading, they asked him about it, like why, like why he wasn't letting the pressure get to him, at least letting, like making it known publicly that it was getting to him. And he was like, you should really only start to worry when you're not hitting. And I was like, oh, I, the I, quote I, respect, <laughs> I, I respect the crap out of that quote. Uh, so uh. good for Jody. Um, in terms of strikeouts, his first strikeout didn't come until his 61st plate appearance. 
during the streak and did not strike out a single time in the last 149 plate appearances Goodness, of the bro. streak. Just different baseball. Would ultimately go 197 plate appearances between strikeouts. Different. All, the DiMaggio family also, it's worth noting, just seemed to have a thing for streaks because his brother, Dom, had a hitting streak in 49 of 34 consecutive games. But that is not the player that I want to talk about. We need to talk about Ted Williams here real quick. Okay. Because when you look at 1941 as a whole, you obviously have the Joe the Joe DiMaggio streak. You have Ted Williams hitting 406 also in that season. Could you imagine? Absurd. What a great year for baseball. What a great dude. year of baseball. Yeah. Un- unbelievable. Uh, this is who he robbed the MVP from. Let's just let's just do a little compare and contrast here, okay? Ted Williams had a higher war. He had more games played, had fewer played appearances. Joe D had more hits, which is kind of wild. Hmm. Ted Williams hit 406, had fewer hits. That is wild. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Ted Williams had more home runs. Ted Williams had a higher batting average. Ted Williams had a higher on base. Ted Williams had a higher slug. Ted Williams had a higher OPS. Ted Williams had a higher OPS plus. Won the batting title. And Joe D gets the MVP. I'm going to need you to answer for that. Seems pretty stolen. Seems pretty stolen to me. I would concur. Okay. As long as there's some accountability here, I just needed okay, that. Sure. I needed that to be to be no, to be known. Um. All in all, I think bringing it back to the, the beginning. Is there another streak you can think of that's at this level of breakability, if you will? Hmm. Hits in a season. That's uh, that's Ichiro, right? What is that? Two seven. Uh, what was that's that? That's crazy. Was it two seventy two? Two sixty two. That's a lot of hits. That's a lot of hits. But also, you get like a. What's the most Luis Arise? I feel like I keep coming back to Luis Arise. What's the most he's had in a season? Because I feel like you get a guy like that. Maybe not Luis Rice, but a guy like a Luis Rice, right. where he, he just comes the, in and yeah. And again, the, like shift being gone, a lot of this stuff can be reintroduced. This style of play can get a little more popular. So the most hits he had in a season was last year at two hundred three. So fifty nine hits short. So like that's gonna that would require yeah. a heck of a season because I think we were just talking all last year. About you talk about like Ichiro was in probably the last era of horses when it comes to starting pitchers where you know you're getting three at bats against them. True, true. And there was maybe only one guy in the bullpen that was chucking 95 or above. Now everybody in the bullpen does that. Now you're lucky to get three plate appearances against a starter. So, like, the I think the difficulty of that. I would say pitching's probably gotten harder even since Ichiro. Um, definitely since Joe D, like the quality of pitching has gone up. Um, but of the streaks that we've talked about or of the records we've talked about, it seems like this one could be the most doable. Um, and w- I would honestly, it would be fun to see. It would be fun to see. It'd be really, really cool. It'd be very like judge esque where you're tuning in each night to yeah. see if it happens. That's yeah. I mean, that's the most recent right example we have of what that would look like. Right. Um you've done the beat the streak before, right? Like the, uh, the I've MLB never made it past thing. like four. <laughs> so yeah. Which when I when I, I started trying it. when I when I started trying doing that, I realized I'm like, if, yeah. if it's this hard and I have the ability to pick anybody I want. It's nuts. I know we're sitting here talking about like, yeah, it's it's doable. Like it could be broken. It it could, but I don't want it to be lost that like this is still a feat yeah. in and of itself. Like it's this a is, big feat. This it's is nuts. some tough. Oh, 
Can't imagine. Still robbed him. Still robbed Ted Williams of the MVP though. But it's fine. I'm I'm sure going to see 56 on base streak. Much less a hit streak. You know, you guys being able to walk or get on base in any way. It's like I don't even see how that could happen. Uh, what is that streak at? I'm curious. On base game streak can't be that much higher, right? The man whose MVP was robbed from him blind, Ted Williams, holds the overall record for consecutive games reaching base with 84 in 1949. It's a, a lot higher. Give Ted Williams the respect he's due. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't think he gets disrespected. You think these writers just voted for Joe D in hopes that maybe they could woo Marilyn Monroe or something? For like what sure. how do you look at this and go, yeah, Joe D is our guy? 100 percent Come on. That's exactly how it went down. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't think you're wrong. Unbelievable. Well, I guess it all depends on when they were seeing each other. I'm trying but. to figure out Joe D might be the ugliest. Baseball yeah. player of all time. I didn't want to did, say. How it. did he pull that off? I didn't want to say it. I was going to leave that to you as the. It's all about Yankee status. Fan. That's it. Kids, be good at baseball. That's it, dude. Because that, that guy is busted. <laughs> <laughs> be good at baseball, kids. Uh, that's all I got. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Unless you got anything else. Spring training games this weekend, yeah? Coming up. I'm about it. Pretty crazy. Pretty I like it. Cool. It's finally getting here, man. It's finally yeah, getting, getting here. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I know I've been flip I sense, floppy. I sense a Snell or Montgomery signing before our next episode. Yeah, I agree. It it has to happen. Like we're Yeah. These dudes need to, if games are starting this weekend, like yeah. we're going to need to get them locked in somewhere, yeah. so, like somehow. Yeah. Let's, I feel like let's the get wives have to be saying something similar. I feel like yeah, their wives like, have to be like, okay, let's go ahead and get settled into a city. Yeah. Or just get out of the house because I'm tired of right. just sitting Time to go to here work. with you talking about how much you miss baseball. Just yeah. go sign with somebody and be done. Yeah. All right, that's but all I got. Now that we drop in the episode, it's 100% coming. Yep, probably within the next 24 hours. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, rate, review, subscribe. Uh, Fantasy League. Oh, yes. Decided very soon, right? I, I knew I forgot something off the top. There you go. If you're that's still listening, thank you, thank you. If you're still listening... Go uh, apply to be in the Fantasy Baseball League. If you've played in one of our Fantasy League seasons before, don't bother. Try this reaching just... out to other fa- past fantasy guys. That's the goal. That's what yep. we've done. Pretty much every league that we've had will go create their own league the next year. So go find yourself a league if if you've done it before. But if you haven't, that's what this whole thing's for, is to be able to connect with you guys. Um we're in a group chat. We text regularly. We are very in tune. We're very about it. So we don't want you coming in just to be blase about it. We want you here to Commit. partake, be fully into it. We don't and want any Anthony Rendones. Yeah, oh, no yeah. Rendones. No, no Rendones in our fantasy league. You have to actually like baseball and want to do Correct. the fantasy baseball league. Yeah, yeah. Um, Link is in the bio. Link is also, you can find the application on our website, 30take.com. Um, yeah, go apply. I don't know when I'm going to close that window, but it'll probably be pretty soon so we can start locking in group text details and getting yeah. draft dates set up and all that. So go apply. Link in the bio. Link on our website, 30take.com. And that's all I got. For everyone else, don't go chasing curveballs. Love y'all and as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy.